couple questions about season two here. First, what kind of conversations did you have with with Chris about, you know, making Claire stand out from the rest of the characters that we met all throughout season one so much and also the value of her standing out? Because literally everything about what you're doing in uh, in this show with your performance, like the tone, the cadence of the line delivery, the way she's lit, even everything is not what the other characters are doing and how we have seen them. She is something totally different. And like somehow it feels like it it works. <laughs> I mean, I think what Chris and I were excited about with Claire is like that kindness and like empathy is like a really radical thing now. Like it's so like crazy to just see like a kind character in anything because we're such a kind of pessimistic society now. And um, I think with a show like The Bear, which w- with the first season that's so like intense and uncut gems and, you know, crazy energy and uh, combustible situation, like to have a character that's just like peaceful and, and in herself and, and really just wants to connect and um, wants to be, she just wants to be in a relationship where people are good to each other. And she also, you know, Carmi's going so fast and, and running from so much, so much family trauma and all this stuff, just looking at another human being is like the most intimate thing he could possibly do. So I think the way that they just look at each other and he starts to really like let go. And I love that later in the season, when we have our kind of sex scene, true intimacy for Carmi is just staring at another woman, like really just deep connection like that. And I loved to get to be a, to get to be a part of something like that, where that was what it wasn't some like sexy naked thing. It was just like looking into each other's eyes. Um, yeah. And I also, you know, I've struggled with like work life balance and, Oh, can I only be in pain to produce good work? And I just wanted, I, when Chris, asked me to be a part of it. And I learned what it was. I just like kept texting him. Oh my God, I'm so excited that I get to be a part of something that's like talking about this because it's, we all struggle with it. I think I I related to that mentality a little too much. I I might love my work a little too much. So I... I appreciated exploring that dynamic in this scenario. So we we learn a lot about what Claire means to Carmen and also all of the other characters in the show, but we don't get very many private moments with her alone. So it was making me wonder, are there any backstory details that might not be canon, but are things that you came up with on your own to like flesh out her world that at this point we can we could feel informing, you know, the choices that she makes throughout season two? I mean, I... I'm there to, you know, serve Jeremy's storyline in a beautiful way to get to talk about someone who like can't let love in, like to get to be a part of a part of something like that. I felt so grateful for. But I also was like, Claire's a fucking badass. She's like, I, I, I mean, Chris and I talked about she like is so smart. She is a, a doctor at like about to be a full doctor at such a young age. She literally takes no prisoners. We were like, she's been, she was already in a relationship like many years ago with someone like Carmi. And she's like, I'm never doing that again. Like she, you know, when, when, when Carmi gives her the wrong number, first of all, have we ever heard of avoidance? Like, let's just put that into the space. But she calls him and she's like, what the fuck? Like, she's not waiting around for anything. She's just doing what she wants in her life. Um, and I, I really liked that. And she also was not like so um, into gender roles that she's like, you have to call. She's just like, what? I like you. Do you like me? Do you want to do this? And then I also love at the end of the show where, you know, in the fridge scene, she she doesn't she doesn't go to him like, oh, like, I'm sorry you feel that way. Like, can I change myself so you'll don't so you won't feel that way anymore? Like she leaves the situation for now. Like, hopefully they'll be a longer journey for them. But for now, like she, I I liked the idea that she had already been in a relationship where she shrunk to fit and she doesn't want to do that anymore. But it doesn't mean that I think she's a romantic, like she, and she does believe in a work like work and romantic work balance. Like, what a radical thing. I want to learn from someone who can do that. I need a spinoff series with her backstory just so like 
I need to learn these lessons. Like, how did you do it? Give me this information. This this kind of leans into uh, the final scene that I want to talk about a little here. Can you can you kind of walk me through her reaction and figuring out what it needed to be after she walked away from the freezer? Because I don't know, just from my perspective, I find it to be a really beautiful balance of of showing honest hurt, but also expressing everything you just said, where she feels badly about what just happened and maybe she's disappointed but she never loses that confidence in what she knows she wants and needs from a relationship. Yeah, I mean, I think Carmi saying, I don't deserve to give happiness or receive it. When she hears that, she's, I think she's hurt because he clearly doesn't want to be in a relationship right now. But I think she also just feels such deep pain that he's trapped in himself like that. He's literally like in a refrigerator of his own heart. Like it's a crazy thing. And so I, I think I... I think she just feels like I'm going to let you go on your journey. And then her um, conversation with Eben, she also does feel so much pride for, for, for him and his journey. And Eben's whole character journey in season two is like the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And I love that they have that moment of connection because Eben cousin wants Carmi to have love so badly. And she knows that. And like, it's this moment of like, it's not working right now, but I'm so proud of you guys. And I, I, I'm, I can still hold both things. Like she's mature enough to do that. Um, and I also love that she doesn't shout at Jeremy. Like she's, she's like, you're in pain. Like it's, it's, it's okay. Um, I'm going to take a little space. And then I have no idea what the future holds for, for anything. But, um, but I really, I liked watching Jeremy smile. I liked watching, his character like have a little bit of joy. I hope he can have more of it, whether that be with Claire or someone else or just through other th friends or whatever in his life. Like I do believe that like that it's not like the end of the road for him to be happy. I just don't know what that looks like for him. Oh God, my heart, like as you're describing this, all, all of like the stress and anxiety, but like the appreciation for the beauty of exploring these complex human emotions and dynamics is, is very fulfilling and satisfying as a viewer. We need more shows that do it as well as this one does. Yeah, it's kind of a, it's a, Chris is like a masterclass in like humanity. It's like a crazy, no, and even the like the, the voicemail where like, and I love you is like the hardest thing he could possibly hear. Like that is su such a human thing. Like, I don't know. I feel like my whole twenties was understanding like, why do when I say I love you, I, this person is angry. Like, I just don't understand this, but it's like, it's just so, it, it's so real and so true. And, um, you know, I, this new generation of men, I think feel like they can be more open about their feelings, but also like, if you've been told you can't be, you know, open and free and let that out, it's like you have a lot of repressed emotion that needs that is ready to burst forward. Mm -hmm.